This is going to be a demonstration of the V-Rig. So SPI course and exam candidates can preview before going out into the instructional world. You'll notice that I have my gear already on my harness. I'm ready to go with a gree gree, my static line, and my climbing rope. Before I start building my V-Rig system, I'm gonna identify where I want my climb, identify my anchoring points, and then come up with a plan. In this system, I'll use a natural feature and cams to demonstrate two different techniques. I've placed my climbing rope and my static rope in positions that are easy for me to work with. I've identified my anchoring points using this horn, which is solid and not movable, and then some cams in a more exposed situation. In this context, I want to build an unquestionably strong leg of my anchor that I can use not only as a single point for me as the instructor, but then one portion of my V-Rig leg. If I'm thinking ahead, my instructor tether needs to have a closed system. I'll do this by tying a double overhand knot in one end of my static rope. We'll dress this really well. Now I need to determine the length of rope I want to have for my instructor tether. Now I'm going to take a bite of rope coming from the rest of the pile of my static rope. and build a bowline, tying it with a bite. In order to have two load strands on this bowline, I'll create the nipping loop structure in both my instructor tether and then also the line going to one side of my V-Rig. I'll take the bite of rope and then build my bowline. After I've dressed and set this bowline, I'll use one of the many tie-offs to secure and lock this bowline. Now I have one anchoring leg where the eye is being pulled into the catch point of this monolithic anchor. I have one leg as my instructional tether and one leg as my V-Rig. I want to get on my instructor tether to add security for myself. Test to make sure it's locking and then start to move into more exposed terrain. Remember that Grigri's are not hands-free and so when I'm moving ropes down into my next anchor point, if I'm working, I want to tie an overhand on a bite close to the brake strand on the Grigri. -gree. This way I can work hands-free. I'm attached to the Grigri -gree and I can start looking for a second point to finish the V-Rig. I found a crack that's going to accept good cams, so I'll build the second leg using two large hand-sized cams to build the next leg of my anchor. central point. And then, if connecting two cams
cams, my preferred method is to use the rope and create a bowline with two bites. I'll tie an overhand, pass the bite around itself. is dressed and set, the next thing to do for a professional standard is to clean up the rest of your static line so that it's nice and neat for anyone climbing or walking around your area. Once we've created the V in our system, we're going to take that bite and double it up. Now, we have two bites in the system and we're gonna tie an overhand or a figure eight. To create the central connection point of our static line to our climbing rope. Two ways to finish off this system with the BFK knot. If we have a shorter tail than the distance of our two loops that will take the carabiners, we can pass that tail around the knot itself, which creates a blocking mechanism. If the tail of our BHK is the same length as the two loops that we're gonna clip our carabiners, in order to close the system, We'll clip all three of those bites together with two opposite and opposed locking carabiners. And now we have a point where we connect the climbing rope to. As I rappel into my system, I'll have to carry my climbing rope with me. In order to have distribution of weight between both legs of the anchor, I'm going to pull both lines in the direction of my climb. From here, once under tension, I can pull up the rest of this material and tie my BFK. At this point, I'll take two similar locking carabiners and clip them opposite and opposed into this central point where we connect the static rope to the climbing rope. Now I'm going to flake out my dynamic climbing line. Because a lot of the times I have my rope flaked out for lead, I'll show you one way to toss ropes that I find works pretty well in most instances. The first thing we want to do is make sure to close our climbing system if we're going to be rappelling down to the base of the climb. This is less important to do if you're just going to toss the ropes and walk around. I'm going to toss my ropes by flaking it out until I get to the middle of the rope. This would be defined with the middle mark. I'll clip my rope in and lock up my carabiners. At this point, usually the weight of the rope that I already have thrown down will pull the rest of the rope down. So I'll tie a blocking knot on the climbing line so that now I can flake the rest of my rope out. Tie an additional blocking knot if I'm repelling and then yell rope. the tension on my system. And then I 
I can do final inspections and take out this blocking knot for the climbing wall. At this point, I've created the V-Rig system with an instructor tether, and I'm going to opt to walk around to climb for the day with my guest. I'll belay myself back the non-exposed terrain and then hike off.